the uh, the start of a new year seems to be one of the uh, most uh, exciting times for me uh, as I get older. It's funny, um, I guess when you're younger, New Year's Eve seems, you'd think that would be more important to you then because the parties and everything like that. But the older I get, the more it means to me, just mainly because of the, the fresh start, the clean slate, the opportunity to, to, to refocus, re-energize uh, yourself is, uh, is something that I, uh, I really look forward to. And, you know, I'm not sure where this tradition came from, but uh, I've always gone through what I call New Year's purge or end of year purge. And what it is, is basically taking an inventory of all my possessions that I have, photography related and things that are not photography related, and go through everything, organize, clean, declutter, and just take a inventory on things that I do not, I don't use on a daily basis, or I don't actively use. And everything that doesn't make the cut gets put into a bag and taken down to Goodwill to, uh, to be donated to someone who possibly could use it. And I've done that for years and it's actually caught, um, you know, my, my wife goes through it with all of her possessions and now my kids do it. So our entire household goes through this New Year's purge every year. And it's something we actually all, we all do look forward to. One, you know, it, it's a good thing. We're donating a, a lot of stuff that we no longer use to somebody who possibly could use it more. And it's also, at least for me personally, I guess this is where this came from. It's just, it's such a, a good feeling for me. It makes me feel like I, my life is simplified, it's organized, it's decluttered, and it makes me feel that I'm more prepared to tackle the new year. The next 365 days, the next 12 months, I'm ready for it. So get rid of all the things that are cluttering my life just to help me stay more focused. And perhaps that's my OCD where, uh, coming through. I'm more than likely it is, but it's something that uh, it really means a lot to me to go through that process. And um, as always, I just conducted and just completed it just a few days ago prior to you seeing this video, which I believe will be on January 2nd. And I was going through the process. Everything was great. And then I discovered this. And I've been looking for this for probably the first 90 days of 2018. And I had given up. I thought I lost it and ultimately what it is is my goals for 2018 were written down in this book and goals and intentions are so important to me it helps me to stay focused and ultimately to determine whether or not I accomplish my goals at the end of the year so to go through an entire year and not know what my goals were were kind of weird it was, it was kind of odd I kept saying I was gonna you know I was gonna write down new goals in the middle of the year and I just never did so ultimately I went through all of 2018 and had no idea what my goals were. And, you know, I bought, I bought 10 of these books and I would use one for each year. And, uh, these are great books just for jotting down, um, ideas. I put the YouTube ideas, uh, photography locations I want to visit, photos I want to make, just, just a general idea book. And I would have one for every year. But for some reason, this one, I didn't have anything written on the front or the back and I decided to start writing backwards in this book. I'm not really sure if there was any thought given to that, but um, nevertheless, it was written back here and uh, I, I forgot I did that. So it was really cool as I was going through my New Year's purge to, to, to find the book, to find the goals and, at, and to have already completed the entire year and go back and see what I actually accomplished was something that's never happened before and it was really cool. So every year I come up with this overarching theme. The, the theme for last year was consume, consume less and create more. I wanted to stop paying attention to what everybody else was doing and put that effort on my own work and create things that I was passionate about because I've always, I found myself just watching so much YouTube, looking at so many other photographer stuff and it, you, you know, you, you start to compare yourself to others and that's, that's, uh, this is not always a good thing. So I wanted to, to create more and consume less. And just to run through some of these, I, um, exhibit in an art gallery. I didn't do that. Uh, go on four photo centric trips. I went on three. I went to Moab, West Virginia and Hawaii. And what I mean by photo centric trips, uh, before I became a full-time landscape photographer, I, you know, time was limited. I had a full-time job. And uh, so many of my trips had to kind of dovetail with family outings. So like when my daughter had a volleyball tournament in a low certain, you know, certain state or my son's soccer tournament or a family wedding or whatever it is, I would always use those opportunities to, to research a, a photo location and then carve out a little bit of time to go, to go to that location. So 
to go on uh, photo centric trips where the only purpose for that trip is photography is something I wanted to go on. So I, uh, I went to three, missed it by one. Grow YouTube to 20,000 subscribers, completely whiffed on that one. By the time you're seeing this video, I should be at, I'm hoping to be at 10,000 before 2018. I'm, I'm pretty close, but uh, I was all over the place in 2017 as far as uh, consistent content. I would go, um, you know, sometimes a month without making anything or a month and a half, and the, the content was all over the place. I would do only gear reviews for a while, or and I would stop doing that, and then it just it just didn't really have a good flow to it. But I feel good with where, where things are at right now. Got um, a good mix of uh, Lightroom and Photoshop uh, post-processing tutorials, some some gear reviews, some vlog style from um, kind of uh, talks like this. So I, th I think it's a good mix right now. So I'm pretty excited to see the the, the finally kind of come up with a good direction for the channel. I, I think that uh, in the beginning when I first started this, you, and I think a lot of n new people to YouTube do this, you you just kind of you stop being yourself really. You know, you, you get the camera in front of you and you kind of create this alter ego, uh, alter person a little bit. And I was, uh, you know, really amped up. If you, if you want a good laugh, just go look at some of my older, older videos. And uh, I was very, very energetic. And a lot of those videos is kind of embarrassing, honestly. But to be able to find my own voice now, it, it, it feels good. It definitely feels a little bit more natural and not as forced. And I actually enjoy making these videos more now than before when I was trying to kind of put on like a, a show, I guess. But, uh, oh, this was a good one here. I had 1 million minutes viewed on YouTube. So for the channel, and I checked this the other day, my channel is just under 2 million minutes viewed. So uh, that was pretty cool. I actually, I crushed that goal. So that was exciting. And I, I missed most of these. So it was good to, uh, to, to, to beat one of these goals. Uh, generate $3,000 in print revenue. I, I did miss that. But I really didn't even start focusing on that until I, um, my my tenure in corporate America in the summer came to an end. So the majority of that money did come at the tail end of 2018, and then so and it really started to gain traction. So that was exciting. This right here is probably the one goal I'm most excited about, and it's the way it was written: asked to be interviewed, asked to be interviewed. And I thought that was pretty interesting the way that I phrased that. And what's cool is it did happen. I didn't ask to be interviewed, but I was asked to be interviewed. So uh, Ian Miller from Shimoda reached out to me and uh, wanted to do an interview. And, I, and I'll put the link to that video in the description if you want to take a look at that. That, But that was that was fantastic. It was a great honor. He's a super great guy. And it was one of the highlights of uh, 2018 for me. So that was a, a good one to, uh, to, to achieve. Visit three new national parks, did it. Uh, Canyonlands, Arches in Moab, and Haleakala in, uh, in Maui. So that was great. Create and sell a 2019 calendar, something I've always wanted to do, something I've never done, and I still haven't done it. Then I had some more personal things in here. Run 300 miles, I did that. Run just over 300 miles, mainly because I'm doing a running challenge that um, I started in July of last year, or July of 2018. And um, so the majority of those 300 miles came in that month, or that, that those, um, the end of the year. Uh, attend 25 yoga classes. I think I attended four or five. So completely whiffed on that one. Hopefully I'll be able to get back into that. Um, meditate for 200 plus days. I completely missed on that one too. I, uh, I've meditated for, for quite a few years now, on and off. I've never been able to get into a really good rhythm with it though, but it's something I really want to focus on uh, moving forward because I think it does amazing things with your mind just to kind of declutter it, get the cobwebs out and all the distractions and it really just helps me to, uh, to perform better when I just get rid of all the noise in my own head. So it was really cool just to, to go through the whole year, like I mentioned, not know what my goals were, and then at the very end, discover what they were, and kind of take an inventory to see how I actually did. So um, that was pretty cool. I uh, I stuck with the same theme of writing backwards in this book, and then I put down some of my 2019 goals. And I'm not done with these yet, I just started it the other day, but I think the overall theme for this year is gonna be keep it simple. You know, since my, my time in corporate America came to an end, the last, the end of 2018 was just such a whirlwind. I was just being, I was, I was pulling myself in so many different directions and I really want to get laser focused this year. I would much rather be great at a few things as opposed to being average in many things. So I'm going to try and just figure out the, 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 the few things that I'm very good at and really focus in on those. 
But, um, and I don't want to run through all of these. These aren't finalized yet, but I, I want to go on eight photo centric trips this year. I want to upgrade my website. I want to create three new video tutorials for visual wilderness. I'm very excited to be part of that team. I want my YouTube channel to cross 5 million minutes viewed this year. So it's a quite a big jump from where I'm at right now. So uh, it's something I definitely want to, uh, to go after. And I really think that the best goals are, and this sounds weird, are goals that you don't hit. You know, if at the end of the year, if you look back on your, your, your annual goals and you hit all of them, you're probably not setting the bar high enough. So really setting the bar high, really shooting high, because even if you miss it, I mean, you're still going to probably end up doing very well. So, uh, and as I mentioned a minute ago, I missed most of my 2018 goals and it was still, uh, I still think it was a fantastic year, but my ultimate goal for 2019, and if I can achieve this by December 31st, 2019, it will be a huge win and it's to not go back to corporate America. At the, if, the, if at the end of 2019, I am still a full-time landscape photographer and it didn't go back to corporate America, huge win for me. I'll be super excited about that. That's the ultimate goal is just to continue to do what I love to do and that's photograph the outdoors. So hopefully I can continue to, uh, to make that happen. So hope everyone has a great new year, had a great holiday season. Best of luck to everybody in 2019. It's gonna be a great year, I know it. And if you have any questions, definitely leave me a comment below. I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.